I'm Jess, and I'm a healthy lifestyle specialist from One New Warsaw. And this is the first instalment of a series of videos to help you keep on track with a healthy lifestyle whilst in lockdown. So when we're at home, it can be difficult to stick to a balanced diet, especially with the food shortages in shops. And we might find that we're eating too much of one type of food and not enough of another. So that's why today we're going to be talking about the Eat Well Guide and how this can help you stay on track and keep a balanced diet during this time. So the Eat Well Guide looks like this and represents our diets as a whole and shows us how much of what we eat overall should come from each food group in order to achieve a healthy balanced diet. As you can see it's split into five sections representing the five different food groups. The first food group that we're looking into more depth is fruit and vegetables. We need five portions of fruit and vegetables every single day and it's always better to get more of your five a day from vegetables and limit any juice drink that you have to 150 millilitres but any source of fruit and veg will provide essential vitamins and minerals that we need for our daily lives. The next food group that we're going to talk about is carbohydrates. So these include any starchy foods like rice, pasta, potatoes, bread and porridge. As you can see, this is quite an important part of our diet as well, making up about a third of what we eat overall. Carbohydrates are our main source of energy and also provide us with key nutrients. Try to choose high fibre options such as brown bread, whole wheat pasta, whole grain rice. However, try not to overeat in this category because if we're not burning off this energy then that can cause us to put on weight. Try to have some of these carbohydrates with every meal but also try to avoid them while snacking. The next food group is dairy and alternatives. These are all a good source of calcium to help strengthen the bones. We should be aiming for about two to three portions of this per day but be careful because dairy foods can be high in fat such as Greek yogurt and some cheeses. So to avoid this, go for options that are reduced fat or low in fat such as skim milk, reduced fat cheese or low fat yogurt, plain yogurt, natural yogurt, things like that. All of these options have just as much calcium if not more than their higher fat versions. So the next food group we're going to be talking about is protein so this encompasses anything from your meat, beans, eggs, fish or nuts and lots of other things. So this is a similar role to dairy so always try to look, look for your reduced fat or your lower fat options. So with your meat that would be lean meats like chicken breast instead of processed meats like bacon, ham and sausages. Beans and pulses are also a great source of protein, especially because they're low in fat and high in fibre. It's also important to have two portions of fish per week and one of these should be oily, such as mackerel, salmon. And these are also a great option in the current climate because you can find these in tins and just store them in your cupboards. So again, we've got the same benefit of them not going out of date. This is also the case with your nuts and your beans and tins. So that, that's also a good option because we can keep those for a longer period of time. Also with your frozen fish, your frozen lean meats, they're also just as good of an option as fresh fish and meat. And you can keep those, store those in the freezer for a longer period of time and use those as and when you might need to. The last food group that we're going to be talking about is oils and spreads. So this encompasses anything from butter, margarine, cooking oil, mayonnaise or salad cream or any other spreads that you might be using. Always try to choose unsaturated fats as these are healthier. So these are sort of vegetable oils, sunflower oils, olive oils. These are healthier options but try to have these in moderation. These types of foods are very high in energy and so should be used sparingly. So a maximum of sort of one to two teaspoons a day is probably enough. So you might have noticed that foods such as chocolate, crisps, cakes, biscuits haven't been included on the Eat Well Guide. That's because we don't need these to make up a healthy balanced diet and they're quite high in either in fat, sugar or salt. So these should be eaten very, very sparingly. And you are allowed to treat every now and then, but try not to make it a regular occurrence. It's also recommended that we drink about six to eight glasses of water a day, which equates to about two litres. If you don't like plain water then adding a low sugar squash is also a great option. Tea and coffee also count towards this figure of your 2 litres a day but try not to have too much caffeine per day because that can cause us to become dehydrated. So to summarise, the Eat Well Guide can be a useful tool to help us achieve a balanced diet. Try and eat lots of foods from various different food groups um, as this will provide us with all the nutrients that we need to stay healthy. My challenge to you is to monitor what you're eating over the next week and see whether there's any areas that you might be lacking in or you might be excessive in and try to use the Eat Well Guide in order to balance this out a bit. Keep an eye on our Facebook page over the next few weeks for more videos and tips on how to stay healthy whilst at home and as ever please get in contact if you require any support. At the moment we can provide you with coronavirus support and signposting, weight management, quitting smoking, social isolation and much more. So please give us a call on 01922 444 4044 or message us on the Facebook page and we'll do our best to help you.